This is IBM, the Islamic Broadcasting Network. The following program is sponsored by the Islamic Media Foundation, sharing the guidance of Allah through broadcast media and the internet. This is the life of Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, with your host, Suhaib Bweb. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Welcome to the program The Life of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم I'm your host Brother Suhaib Webb and welcome to our fifth program uh, Let's pick up right where we left off last time uh, talking about the first marriage of Prophet Muhammad to his wife Khadija bint Khuwailid Khadija bint Khuwailid who came from a very aristocratic family in Mecca and as we know she was married twice before she was married to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam her first husband his name was uh, Abu Hala and she gave him two children one was Hala and the other was Hind and her next husband his name was Atiq Atiq who also uh, like uh, Abu Hala died rather young and in the you know early stages of his marriage with Khadija bint Khuwailid Thus, uh, Khadija bint Khuwailid, she was a widower for, for many years. And eventually, we, as we told the story last time, she would marry Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We said that, mashallah, their marriage was very, very wonderful. And we were talking about the first 12 years of their marriage in our program last time. This is where we left off. And basically, the first 12 to 15 years of their marriage was excellent. And, and, you know, we find that there's an important ingredient in their marriage that many of our Muslim couples are missing. And that is a husband and a wife who lead by examples. And we find that in, in the case of Khadija bint Khuwailid with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet Muhammad led by his example and led by uh, good works. And this is something that many, many times we lack now. You know, you find a brother or sister complaining about their spouse. And then, you know, you just ask them the simple question, uh, do you pray Fajr on time? Do you pray at all? Um, you know, what type of person are you? What type of things go on in your home? And nine times out of ten, you find that these people are usually committing some type of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here we find the opposite that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam led by example. If you look at the science of what we call the sunnah, the sunnah are the statements and actions and approvals of Muhammad and their primary, uh, the primary resource for the information on the sunnah are the books of hadith. If you look at these resources of hadith covering the different aspects of the Prophet Muhammad's life, the scholars divided this, these uh, resources into three parts. One is the sunnah, what we call sunnah al-qawli, the sunnah which is related to the way or the things that the Prophet Muhammad, excuse me, said. The second is the Sunnah al-Amali, the Sunnah related to the actions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And the third are the silent uh, approvals of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa You know, if you look at the highest number of quantity of the Sunan, you find that the greatest quantity of Sunnah that we have are the Sunnah related to actions. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was a leader by actions. You know, how many of us brothers in our home, we lead by action? I mean, Umar radiallahu anhu, he, he used to pray tahajjud, and then he would wake up his family to pray the tahajjud prayer, the late night uh, non-obligatory prayer. And as he was waking them up, he would read the following verse of Qur'an, where he would say, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَةِ Order your family to pray. So the Prophet Muhammad led by an example. And let's look at a few of those examples from his early, you know, the early days of his marriage with Khadija bin Khuwailid, radiallahu anhu, radiallahu anha. And then let's ask ourselves as brothers, you know, do we set forth this type of example for our wives? Uh, do we act in a way that is pleasing to Allah 
and therefore would affect the hearts of our wives and cause our wives to respect us and therefore bring about a change in our homes. Let's listen to these stories and let's see where we stand. Zayd ibn Haritha. Zayd ibn Haritha was the son of, uh, was the son of Harith and Su'da. And at the age of eight years old, Zayd, who was from a very, very nice family, uh, not in the area of Mecca though, was actually kidnapped from his mother at the age of eight years old, Su'da, and taken to the area of Syria and Palestine and Lebanon. And there he was sold into slavery at the age of eight years old. He was actually sold at least two times in the area of Asham uh, until finally Hakim ibn Hazam, Hakim ibn Hazam came to Syria and there he found Zayd and he purchased him and he brought Zayd back to Al Hijaz, to the area of Mecca and the surrounding areas of Mecca. Hakim ibn Hazam actually was the uncle of Khadija bint Khuwaylid radiallahu anha. When he came back to Mecca, he gave Zayd as a gift to Khadija. Uh, after Khadija married the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, she saw the you know the mutual fondness shared between Muhammad and Zayd, that they developed a very nice relationship as one of father and son. In fact, Zayd was 20 years younger than Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She decided to do something to please her husband. And this is something also that we, we don't see now in today's society, uh, especially amongst the Muslims, is that a, a good Muslim sister seeks to, to serve her husband and to serve him in a way that pleases her. And also the husband seeks to serve her as well. But we, we find that you know, now our Muslim sisters are, are jammed between two extremes. The extreme of feminism, uh, you know, you can do everything you want to do, you know, you're not a slave of men and so forth. Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. And on the other end, we find the other extreme of shut your mouth and cook the biryani. Alhamdulillah, Islam, you know, came with the middle path. As Allah says, وَكَذَارِكَ جَعَلْنَكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَةً That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, has made this ummah a balanced ummah. So seeking to serve her husband and please her husband, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she gave Zayd as a gift to him. Muhammad immediately freed Zayd and Zayd became what's known as Mawla. Mawla is the person who was a slave before and was freed and stayed with the person who freed, with, freed them. So Zayd, he stayed with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even after being freed. And subhanAllah, the family of Zayd, because Zayd was now in the area of Mecca and Mecca was a, a center of uh, information and activity in those days, they heard about Zayd being in Mecca and they came to the area of Mecca and they found out that Zayd was staying with one of the family members of Abdul Muttalib. Thus the father of Zayd, Harith, he came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he said, O oh, son of Abdul Muttalib, uh, not meaning the direct son but in reference to the lineage of the Prophet ﷺ. Like in the Qur'an where Allah SWT says, Ya ukhta Harun. Uh, Allah SWT calls Maryam the mother of Harun. Many of the enemies of, of our faith or those people who have tried to you know, degrade our faith have said that this is a mistake in the Qur'an. Actually these people, they don't understand the method used in the Arabic language sometimes to identify a person's lineage. Also with the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, Harith, he said, Ya, O son of Abdul Muttalib, doesn't mean that Muhammad is actually his son, but he means he's from his lineage. And the Prophet Muhammad responded to him and he explained to him that I'm the father of Zayd and I would like to take Zayd back to our family. The Prophet Muhammad said, why don't you let Zayd choose? Now, maybe this sounds like, you know, why didn't you just give him his son? But you have to realize, subhanAllah, in those days, this was a big step. I mean, back in the days, if someone would have came to you and said that my son is your slave, they would have been like, or my son is your freed servant, excuse me. You, you know, the people would have responded like, so what? You know, step up off me and get out of my face. But here we see the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying, "Okay, let's bring Zaid and let's let Zaid choose between staying with me or, uh, you know, returning back to his family." <laughs>